All right, so since YCS Indie results are in, we need to do another Best Decks tier list. Please share all of your thoughts in the comments down below. I want to know if you're maybe surprised by some results of the decks this past weekend, or if everything was according to your own personal predictions. Also, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, as well as check out my OnlyFans for exclusive content. So let's go ahead and get started. We have about 30 or something decks to cover the usual tiers, but I did change up the colors a tiny bit because I figured I would do it. I just wanted to, no particular reason. So let's go for the first deck and let's see where we want to place it. Branded Chimera is interesting because we actually saw it on stream, but it didn't convert into top cut. So people played it and they figured it was going to be a good choice. And I still think it might be like, I think tier 1.5 is fair, but you need to kind of be well prepared for some of the top matchups and maybe players were just prepared enough to face branded chimera it is struggling a tiny bit against some of the well-represented hand chefs right now like draw and ash and uh, i get that you can play through some things and the new support did quite a bit for the deck also the anubis is amazing but still, if people are prepared enough and if they have a card that's just going to completely end their turn, sometimes there's not much you can do. So I think it's nice if you take it to like a regional event or something, and I still think you can do well also at a bigger event, but maybe this event just wasn't really it for this deck. I still think it has potential and we'll see what happens moving forward. It might just not be as high on the tier 1.5 list, you know, slot or whatever. We'll see. Moving on to the next deck, I think the Brave Pile is an interesting tier 2 contender just because it is able to go first so well and I always say this, this going second is not ideal but you still have about 9 to maybe 12? Probably not, but about 9 slots to play non-engine so it's something, right? And nowadays some decks can only afford about 9 to 12 if they really start cutting engine mainly i'm looking at monodium when i say this and we can also compare this combo deck to monodium for example because i genuinely think monodium is in a really good spot and we saw that at the event so if things just go you know further just like they have been going i feel like monodium is still going to be popular it's like it gets hurt by some things, but it's kind of weird to interact with because in some hands they're going to be able to play through disruption quite easily and in some hands they just get completely stopped. Also, there's different versions, so you can't really know which engines to expect. Maybe there's, you know, the factor of people just being a little confused with what Monodium does and stuff, so there's that. And also the going first is really strong, so if a player goes to an event and it just happens to you know, be a good event for them and they win a lot of dice rolls. That's of course, you know, in their benefits. So I don't know. I still think the deck is solid by itself. You do need to be kind of lucky sometimes because the going second is a little tough. Like I said, it is kind of lacking for non-engine. And in that regard, it's similar to the Brave Pile, but it just sees more results and a higher conversion rate. So I figured I would put it in tier 1.5 and we'll see what happens moving forward. But yeah, it managed to go all the way to top four, which is kind of nice. It's actually really impressive. So yeah, for this deck, I think that's awesome. And there was also like another one in top 16, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, Monodium is kind of going strong. Regular Dispia, I think is just tier two, just, I don't know, basic tier two contender. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. It's, it's kind of like, there's a couple factors. People are kind of tired of it, so they just want to play Chimera branded because it's new and interesting and also better. So there's that. The second thing is the lack of non-engine, which just kind of turns some people off because there's no way for you to realistically combat the meta if you don't have enough non-engine. And the engine is really strong, but you need to be really good with the deck. And sometimes you just get punished by someone not being an amazing player but like having ash or d barrier in a in a spot where you kind of just don't want to get disrupted so there's a couple things and uh, i think it's fair to put it in tier two not amazing not bad so there's that okay dragon i think can go into 1.5 it just has solid matchups and bestios are still really strong against a lot of top decks it is interesting to me how there wasn't you know dragon link made it to top cut if i'm not mistaken uh, but it might have been the only, let me, let me rephrase this. I think the only version that made it was the Horus Bestio version. If I am mistaken, please correct me. But this is the next one I want to talk about, which is, it's not Dragon Link, right? It's something completely different. And I will put it in tier two, simply because it only had this one result. One person made it with Horus Bestio, which is like, it's really cool. Like how the deck played was very similar to Dragon Link. 
but like it's of course still different so i don't know i feel like this has a lot of potential might even be tier 1.5 people don't really know how to interact with it it's a completely new deck bestios are nice as non-engine as well if you think about it and like the horus cards are really cool like being able to spam out a ton of bodies as well as getting card advantage is just really strong the only issue is joel but joel was always an issue with dragon link so comparing this to the other version and again if someone made it and i made a mistake i'm sorry but we saw dragon link on the bubble but the regular dragon link player actually lost so i don't know it's a cool deck maybe some people just didn't choose it for this event because i still think it has a ton of potential actually and is well positioned in the meta so that's it for both of these dragon versions and dark world okay listen <laughs> i'll put it in tier two maybe here just because it's like i get that it's strong but all of the cards in the meta just make it so it's almost impossible for you to play dark world and it can get any kind of support and it has the gen and ken and all of that and like teruli is busted hand looping is busted i get all of that and it can play through some things but droll and bestios and shifter and dweller and all of these cards just hurt it to the point where people will probably just not pick it up and because they don't it doesn't have results it probably has tier two potential but we'll see dino is just rogue it's it's almost like it's almost not good right now it just I don't know, I might actually put it here. Like, no one actually does anything with dinos. It's fragile, it is not strong enough, so I think it's fair to put it here. Dreadshawn is like top of rogue in my opinion. It is struggling with playing through some disruption. And people always say that, yes, Dreadshawn is able to play through this and this and this and this. And yes, against some things, Dreadshawn is going to be strong because of the, like, the type of disruption that's present in the meta right now. But it's not gonna be great against Joel, against Bishchios. Doesn't have enough space to play a ton of non-engine. You just kind of want to win dice rolls. And at that point, you probably want to pick up an Audium. If you want to play a combo deck that's good at going first and a little better going second. Because with Monodium, you're actually able sometimes to just you know, try and play through disruption with engine as well. It's not gonna be as easy. But if your opponent makes a mistake, you know, it's a little easier to play Monodium, I think than Dreadshawn. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, Exosister is actually probably tier 2. I want to put it fairly high. I genuinely think this deck is well positioned. It plays non-engine, which is great. The disruption that it provides is non-destruction, which is so important because Unchained is in the meta. And a lot of cards in, in the game just kind of do stuff with the graveyard. Like Chorus cards will move themselves out and there's there's always something, you know. Cards are getting banished for the summon of rescue monsters, etc. So, uh, you know, the Exorcister effects are always going to be live. Shifter is amazing. And also, I really like the list, the the top eight if i'm not mistaken list uh, they played forbidden lands which is a cool non-engine card that you can play in here to sort of protect your plays and also the shout your opponent which i figured is cool and um yeah this deck is just like always when tier lemon is strong in the meta exorcister kind of is as well and um it is not the most incredible deck by itself but sometimes in the correct meta it's actually able to to do fairly well it's consistent enough with the speeded package of the Aratama Sakitama, if I'm not mistaken, that's what the cards are called. I always mesh up the names, but yes, so that deck, it's nice, basically. Um, Flunder, okay. Um, probably tier two. I want to put it here just because it's like, it is basically a shifter deck and it did top, but it's it struggles with consistency. And uh, a lot of times when people are too prepared, for Flunder, it's just not gonna do well, you know, and we have all of this targeting negation and Ash and Droll, and sometimes it's able to play through that, but it's not going to be every single hand, especially if they brick and you kind of just want to rely on one play, and if you're not able to do that, you don't do anything. So the deck is not bad, it's just the second that it sort of like becomes popular, even if it's only for one or two events, people are going to respect it and then it cannot compete anymore, at least not as much. But um, yeah, I guess Bistios don't hurt it, which is nice. I want to put it here maybe, just because this deck is like not exactly seeing results, a lot of them at least. And um, okay, Gold Pride is like rogue, probably could go also in Nugget right now, but it's like, it's decent 
Okay, let's do it like this. It's decent because it's mid rangey and we are in a diverse meta. Mid range decks are always going to do well in that type of meta because no, no one deck is like too overpowered. Rescue Ace is almost too overpowered, but we'll talk about that. Um, Rescue Ace is nice, but other than that, no deck is like insanely strong. So you're able to play that type of deck where you just do very fair stuff, if that makes sense. And on that topic, I also want to mention Sword So which I feel like could actually go into tier two, might even be a better choice than Dark World. I don't know if, if you guys um, have any kind of opinions on that, I would encourage you to share it. But I actually think like Sorso is not bad. Okay, maybe I'm overestimating it a tiny bit. Let's do it like this, because no Sorso actually topped or did they? As far as I'm concerned, I think one of them actually did. Okay, we're gonna move it here. I am convinced now. Okay, Sorzo, Salomon Great, Exosister. All of these decks, what they have in common is playing all of the non-engine and doing a couple things, just putting up enough disruption on the board to survive. And then either they OTK or they just kind of slow the game down, make it so you don't have enough resources and they have a ton of follow-up. All of these decks are great at doing that. And that's why all of them are going to shine at least in tier two in this meta. And I actually think this goes for Salomon Great as well. I want to put it here, like, I'm sorry to all the Dark World players, but your deck is just not performing. I am sorry. I genuinely think these decks are better right now. And um, yeah, I guess we have Metmech and Marinsis as well, but they are not actually, they're not doing as much. And mainly what we're focusing on right now is the YCS Indie results. And on the regional level, this might actually change. Like, I, I think, you know, um, Metmech actually has a chance as well as Marinsis. But they're a little, um, I don't know, Mathmag just has an issue with only one circular, you know, being in rotation or circulation, no pun intended, <laughs> or intended, I guess. Um, because if you want to play, you know, something on your turn three, you want to have access to circular, which you don't. So one circular is just always going to hurt you, especially if they disrupt you. And um, with Marine says, it's kind of like, what it does is it just a tiny bit too fair if I'm being completely honest. And if you make a mistake and don't have enough resources, there's no way for you to recover, I think. Okay, Hero is like here because I just feel bad. I don't want to put Hero like away and just keep it on the Rogue Dex tier list. I want to have it here because people like it. I just don't think the deck is that great. So I just keep stuffing it in Rogue and just, you know, leaving it there. It is not insane. I could actually put it here, knock it right now. I just... It's not really doing much. It's a little too fragile to some disruption and there's so many better decks right now. So just just maybe play a different deck because mid range decks actually can shine right now. So maybe change to something else or just play hero if you want. I'm not gonna stop you. I just don't think it's that amazing, but there's, there's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, Infernoble, it kind of surprised me that Infernoble didn't do better because I figured it's a little bit better than Monodium actually. It is so nice because it's really tough to disrupt and going second it's able to bait so many things with only engine since like you can just make you know any Zolde if it gets disrupted and if you have an extender make another one continue with your plays. The angel ring is really really nice so I was a little bit surprised but maybe, you know, just maybe uh, people like bubbled or just almost got there but didn't. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I genuinely don't. But I do think this deck has a lot of potential. So I'll still leave it quite high. I actually think it's good. I'll leave it at the top of tier 2 and we'll see what happens. I, I still believe in this deck. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Kashtira is like rogue, I think. You can play it very control-like which is just kind of toxic if I'm being honest and um, feels kind of useless. Like if you want to do that, I don't know, play Runic Stun, which we have to talk about. <laughs> I listen, listen, I know not every single person actually listens to the tier list, so I don't want to leave it in Bra so they don't get confused because I think it's better than Bra in terms of power. I just want to leave it here because it's like if you play this deck, why? Why? But to each their own, you know, you can do whatever you want. So let's put it in Rogue. Let's let's just put this in Rogue, maybe like here, here, I don't know. It's hopped, I get it, but maybe people were just not that prepared. I don't think Runic is amazing and all of the stun stuff is just like, 
I don't know. I don't, I really don't know what to think. I have to respect it, I guess. Let's just put it here. Maybe. I don't know. I don't there that's all I'm going to say about this deck. I just I respect it enough. But just don't play this, please. <laughs> okay, moving on to Labyrinth. Oh, I threw it right where I wanted it. I think Labyrinth is nice, but I will leave it here because there's there's just this weird thing with Labyrinth where um, you kind of have to... Like, you have to play all of these trap cards to combat the meta, but how are you going to do that when the meta is that diverse? So it's really, really hard, but it's still a very solid deck. I actually don't think the Arias, the butler, did that much for the deck some builds don't even run it actually most of the builds that i've seen and the topping build that i featured on the channel earlier also didn't so there's that but um the deck is still strong so i think we still need to respect labyrinth 100 percent mikanko is nice it's like <clears throat> i'll put it in bottom of tier two i actually think it's kind of interesting we saw the asset golem lock which is sick <laughs> but um, you know no disrespect to the player by any means uh, but it is kind of insane it really really smart as well but yeah that's what mikanko can do and it's just so annoying you cannot target anything and just wild and it has a nice matchup like against some of the top decks i actually think this deck is um worth respecting <laughs> and i'm so i'm so not nice to dark world we'll see i don't know I don't know, let's do it like this, maybe. This deck is not bad, but it's just not seeing any kind of results, actually. So we'll leave it like this. Plunder is rogue. I think plunder is cool. I always talk about fl uh, plunder quite fondly. Let's do it like this. It's nice. You know, just like Gold Pride, it's kind of like playing non-engine. Does a couple quite fair things in terms of engine, but it can play runic cards as well as adventure. So I think it is a little more just well positioned because of that because of all the flexibility that it has and the versatility that it's able to i guess you know do but yeah i just think it's only rogue there's just more powerful decks than that okay i wanted to include pendulums because people are fans of them and i'm pretty sure they're doing something in the ocg i haven't really looked at it that much yet but I think Pendulum has potential, it's just really hard because you can't really go second that well. Your engine is not inherently bad, but Pendulum, I feel like Pendulum used to be a little better at going second. I don't know, it's just the lack of non-engine is really hurting the deck, so I will put it in Naga right now, but things might change later down the line there's just too much versatility right now so it's really hard to to combat the meta with a deck that actually just doesn't play non-engine almost so i think it's really tough maybe in a different meta we might want to have to wait a tiny bit which i would love it if pendulums would be good in the meta i really like them but we'll see what happens okay so moving on to sprite we have a couple different versions so i will put this one in like tier 1.5 this is just like sprite in general so sprite with adventure sprite with a heavy nimble count we saw different versions that did well and i think sprite is just nice the sprite side of things was always good and if you pair it with you know well thought out non-engine as well as some cool things like the adventure stuff can be or we actually saw the tri brigade version do well which i'll put it in like top of rogue actually i think it's really nice seeing it top but it is kind of like, it actually doesn't have that much space for non-engines since it has to include all of the engines. So it's really surprised me that this deck actually topped. It's nice to see, but I will leave it at the top of Rogue. Some of the other sprite builds might be a tiny bit better. I'll put this one in tier 1.5, maybe. I think sprite with, with just like going second cards and sprite stuff might be a little bit better. So we'll leave this down here. I haven't actually... Oh, let's... Let's put it next to this one, I guess, in Rogue. I haven't seen any builds with actual Melfi stuff do well recent recently or as of late, I guess. So I think this is like not bad and this is not bad either. So let's do it like this because we haven't really seen a lot of tops. No, actually, it's almost the same deck. Let's just do it like this and we'll see what happens. It is interesting to me that it didn't really see a lot of results because I think both of these have potential, especially with SP just doing a lot for this deck. There is the issue of SP, on the other hand, just being a threat to this deck because at any moment you're just able to, you know, pluck off their level two off the board or disrupt some their plays, you know, in some other way. So it's kind of like it's a little more tough. But I still believe in, in runic cards. So we'll see if I'm right a couple weeks down the line. But I 
feel like, you know, um, I like it. I feel like I like it. <laughs> Super sentence, but you know what I mean. Okay, I think Bradley is nice. It's the first one going in tier one, and um, it's just, it's really good. I always say that the non-engine that hurt Kashtira also hurt Perdly. Kashtira is no more, almost, except for the degenerate version. So Perdly is not hurt anymore, as, at least as much. It's it's just nice. It's really, really strong. It's nicer going second. It's nicer going first. And um, Noir is still a little tough to deal with. If people try to respect it more it might be a little bit tough because everyone is just going to try to at least side book cards some people still main deck uh, either moon or eclipse or more players are gonna side lance or something like that to disrupt their leap but other than that you know it's kind of like bitches don't hurt it that much and they hurt a lot of other strategies so people decide to play that over dd crow whereas dd crow would probably hurt probably more not probably it would hurt probably more so there's that and just if you're good with the deck i think it's very hard to be that player so yeah tier one and it is seeing results it's topping and uh i think it's going to be a threat okay rescue is <laughs> it has to go to the to the top to the absolute top maybe i should have changed this icon and made a little tiny like black wedge down here um or whatever it's called now but uh yes sinful spoilers rescue is it's just the deck to beat right now, I think. It had a high representation as well as a high conversion rate, which couldn't be said for Tier Lament, fun fact, uh, when you think about it. But yes, Rescue Ace is just so solid. And now it's much more consistent thanks to the Sinful Spoils cards. So all in all, this deck is just, it's nicer going second as well. It's actually not that tough to go second with the deck. And now that consistency is fixed, I think this is really going to be a threat. And I guess staying on topic of the top decks, I'll put Unchained on here as well. It is still really good. It was like the third or fourth most represented deck in top cut, if I'm not mistaken. So it's still here. It is still doing what it has been doing. There's just so many new decks and like... We have the Respect Rescue Ace as well, but Unchained is still really, really solid. And there's Tear as well, which I'll put on the fourth spot. I did not separate Horus Tear and Tear, mainly because not as many players play Horus, at least from what I've seen. Maybe they just don't really think it's that amazing. It plays into draw a little more heavily and like you're milling a ton already. Maybe you're not necessarily in dire need of the zombie vampire. And you would also be milling your opponent's deck, which can be risky if more players pick up tier. The conversion rate, like I said, was really poor, but basically, you know, the deck can be countered with a lot of top decks, not top decks, top cards that like hurt the other top strategies as well, is what I actually wanted to say. So Bistios are nice against different decks as well as shifters. So both of these cards, of course, hit uh, tier. There's DD Crow as well. And uh, it's just that it gets disrupted and the RNG is also present. So sometimes your mills and your hands are just not going to be ideal. And, uh, you know, draw hurts them and all of that. Maybe I said that already. I'm not certain. But basically, yes, it just, um, it's still really strong. But I get why the conversion rate wasn't really, you know, as amazing as it was in Rescue Ace, it's this case, for example. So yeah, I feel like this is a correct, I guess, tier one. And let's move on to Rika. Rika is so okay. I will put it like here, maybe. It's actually seeing tops, just like Labyrinth, for example, or Branded Chimera, not Branded Chimera, uh, Monodium, I wanted to say. It's um, seeing a solid representation in Top Cut. It is still very much present in the meta, even though that by now people probably have read the Rika cards and are prepared for the deck. It is still so strong going first, and sometimes one disruption is just not going to hurt them enough, and they are still able to establish at least something it's just a it's a nice deck it's actually quite strong and if you pilot it well i think you're going to be able to to do well in the meta i think i'll just move this higher maybe um i don't know i believe in labyrinth let's do it like this i think i'm satisfied with that maybe let's do this a little bit higher just because this didn't actually top and i think that's actually fair that's a fair placement okay TG is probably rogue. I will put it like down here and we'll see what happens with it. It's a not a bad combo deck, but it's just that there are so many other ones present in the meta that are better and people just don't really lean towards TG, but they might moving forward. It is still fairly new, so I have hopes for this deck, but we'll see what happens. Chop Tricks is also nice. It's just rogue. It's fairly solid. I think it's okay, but people just 
rather play Labyrinth because it's the better chap deck. So that's pretty much it. But it's not bad. It has some decent matchups. And as for Vanquish Soul, I actually want to put it in tier two. I don't think it's bad. I'll put it quite high towards the top and maybe let's do it like this. This is actually a little better right now from what we've seen, at least results wise. I think it's fair to sort of, you know, do it like this. Okay, so Vanquish Soul, the support is nice. They are able to, you know, play a fire that's not just a random card, which is great. And um, as for the new chap card, I don't know if every single build is playing it as well, but they are playing the monster. And um, the deck is just, I like it. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm a little biased, but I just, I genuinely think it's nice. And people don't really think about it that much. They are preparing for some other decks. And Vanquish Soul is just always there. It's always squeezing in tops. And um, non-engine is like present. You have enough space to play that. And your consistency is suffering sometimes. But you try to mitigate that with pot cards, etc. So I don't know, you know, sometimes just one Fenrir is going to do the job, if I'm being honest. So yeah, I think this deck has potential. It also got a top at least one if I'm not mistaken. Again, it's a lot of decks. So I try to remember as many results as possible. But um, if I said anything incorrectly in the video, please correct me in the comments, which I'm sure you'll do regardless. <laughs> so, okay, this tier list I ended up putting Dino at the lowest spot, which is kind of funny, but I, I just don't really feel Dino. So there is that. I like it. I feel like this is a sort of a fair representation of the meta so share all of your thoughts uh, like the video if you enjoyed and uh, check out OnlyFans like I said and I'll see you in the next video bye